most of the people that I talk to have an upside down view of scarcity when it comes to their web development business. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be talking about how do you use scarcity in a way that will enable you to double your rates or, or double your business or even more than that. Um, and furthermore, what is it that's really scarce? And that's uh, the thing that is so perplexing is the uh, the view that clients are really really hard to find and not just not just clients but the types of clients that you really want to be working with the, the ones that are ready to invest in their business the ones that are the, the types of clients that you can have these ongoing relationships with uh, and the truth is those types of clients are everywhere they're everywhere and what i want to talk about today is how to change the way that you view yourself and your business and the type of service that you provide and the results that you can deliver and i think when you do that you're going to have a fundamentally different perspective with regard to scarcity and how you can use scarcity to your advantage as opposed to feeling like you have to accept every project that comes across your desk because the projects are scarce. When the reality is you are the one who is scarce. It's hard to find people like you. And that's the point that I really wanted to make today. Hey, Jim, how are you doing? Boom, high five to you. So, uh, so the point that I, that, that I want to bring out is there's very few people, very few people out there in the web development world that are like the folks here in this group, that are like the people that are really interested in delivering results and having the, the, having the tools to do it, having the mindset to do it, and having a results-driven approach to the way they deal and interact with their clients and the work that they do. It's very seldom that I come across people that, that, that have that mentality except for in this group and and the symptoms are these so do you have do you have leads who are never calling you back like if you if that's the case then the what is what is the client thinking the client is thinking well there's you know so many other people that can build websites for me i don't have to call this person back if for whatever reason they're not available i'll just hire another person whatever and that's partially true. The part that's true is there's so many people calling up clients saying, hey, can I build you a website? Hey, can I do some graphic design services for you? Hey, can I then fill in the blank with a variety of different types of services? And the problem is clients are having a variety of issues, really. But the real problem that the clients are having is they don't have any ability to differentiate between the different service providers other than by price. And therefore, the price is getting driven down on all the services. And you can see it everywhere. You can see it on Upwork and Fiverr. You can see it when you go to WordCamps and talk to people about what they're able to charge for their projects. You can see it everywhere you go that when you find a business that's simply offering to do services for their clients, whether it's graphic design services, copywriting services, content marketing, you know, responsive design, building a website, <laughs> installing an SSL certificate, whatever those services are, when you, when, you, when you go out there and start offering those types of services, that is what everybody's doing. There's no scarcity there. If, anybody, if a client really wants those types of services, you can easily, they can easily find them. But that's not what they want. No clients actually want those services. The clients are concerned about their business and how having an online presence is going to mean something when it comes to basically connecting the dots between what they're doing online and how that impacts their business. So if you're able to show up in a way that actually helps them achieve their business objectives and you stop going and you stop running around selling like websites and you start selling results, you start promoting and marketing your business with the results that you can deliver. And the way that you do that, by the way, and we talk about this fairly regularly, the point is, and we, for the past couple of weeks, we've been going over your experience and your authority and you know, are you using the, the, the skills and the ability and the, and the years that you have invested in that? Even if you're just starting up your business new, you probably have relatively extensive experience figuring out branding, marketing, online stuff like SEO stuff. At least in comparison to your client, you have a vast knowledge of experience with those types of things that your client doesn't have. But are you using those things to show up as a leader, to, to, to lead your clients into a level of success that they're not able to achieve if it's up to them to write the request for proposal? And that's really the whole point. 
And when you, if you, if you're able to adjust and you're able to make that shift from being like a WordPress business and you shift into being like a, a business consultant and you power your results with the WordPress ecosystem, what you're going to find is you are the one that's scarce and there's an abundance of clients available to you. Because the, the truth is there are so many clients, there's so many small business owners that are out there that are just wishing and, and, and praying for someone like you to come along and actually tell them what they need to show them how to get more calls, more leads, more clients, additional revenue streams in their business, to actually make a difference with their online marketing, as opposed to just showing up trying to milk them for more money to do stuff that doesn't really matter. Like there, there's, there's so many people out there that just want to sell websites to clients and then move on. And like, I was just, I was just reminded of a, of a colleague of, of mine, I guess you would call him a colleague, someone that I know that's in the same industry. And he called me up, I don't know, it's, it's been a while, maybe, maybe a couple of years ago, but I was, I was just remembering it a few minutes ago. And, um, and, and he says, hey, you know, we need to build this new website. They've got this WordPress site. They need to, you know, they, we're just going to change the theme into this other, into this other theme that's, you know, going to kind of freshen up the site. And so I begin to ask questions like, you know, why? why, why, are, they, why do they, are, they, are they experiencing some particular problem with their current site? Do they, do they have projects that, that they want to display that they just can't with the site that they've got? Are they not attracting the leads? You know, what's the problem? Are they not seeing the conversions? You know, what's the search engine results aren't what they want. You know, what's the issue? Well, really, the, the, you know, the, the designer that I was talking to really didn't have an issue. You know, it's just like he just said, well, I just sold him a website. And, you know, basically, you know, he wanted to hire me to basically dump the current site into a new WordPress theme and then move on. So I said, hey, but do you have any um, like what? It, OK, so even if we did do that, what are we going to do next? Like after the site's in this new shell, this new pr presentation of the site, what are we going to do next? What's the next? You know, how are we going to help this client make a difference because we did that? And of course, the answer was was not forthcoming. There was no result. There wasn't there's was no other plan. And, and that's, that was, this is like the core of my frustration with people in this business. It's that all, like a lot of people, I'm not saying everybody, but a large number of people simply want to sell websites to clients, you know, you know, charging as much as they can to get that website out there, but really not thinking through whether or not the change is worthwhile. Is it a good investment? Should they have taken, I think they were going to, you know, he was going to charge like 2,500 bucks or something for, for the whole thing. He was doing some design and he wanted me to, you know, do the WordPress shift, you know, from one theme to the other. And, you know, we we're going to work together. It was a really relatively low budget project, but he would, you know, he does as much as he could charge to kind of, you know, get the, get the client to say yes. And, you know, we were just going to spend a couple of days and make the shift. And it was so stupid. I ended up saying, no, I'm not going to do it. I said, you know, just hire somebody cheaper for that or whatever, you know, give the guy a better deal. But the, but that's the point. The number of people out there selling these types of websites where you just, you know, switch one theme to another theme or whatever, without any regard to whether the new theme is even going to perform better, without any regard to the messaging, without any regard to any sort of lead generation capability that the website has, that's, you know, the project is just sell the website. And if you show up in a different way, like if you are the type of person who is concerned about whether or not the new website is going to perform better than the old website or why somebody should have a website at all in the first place, if that's the kind of person that you are, what you're going to find is you are the scarcity. You're the scarce resource. There's very few people out there doing that. And when you show up like that, like when you come up to the client with the mindset of, not selling, but serving. I say this all the time. I never sell websites to anyone. I, I, I offer to serve them with the types of skills that I have and in a way that will deliver results for them, the kinds of results that they're really looking for. And those results are business-oriented results. They're not like you once you didn't have a website and now you do have a website. That's just a stepping stone towards the results. The actual results are things like more calls, you know, more, more bookings for meetings, more, you know, more time, more places to go to speak, more, more, you know, more revenue streams or, or existing customers coming back more often. So more repeat customers, you know, things that actually make a difference to the bottom line of what your clients are trying to do. And when you, when you show up like that, offering to serve them in that way, a ton of problems just, just dissolve and go away. One problem is the fact that, you know, 
the, the the uncomfortable nature of having the sales conversation just vanishes. It just goes away. That's not a problem anymore because you're not selling anything to anybody. You're simply offering to help. And if they want the help and they want your help implementing the types of concepts that you're bringing to the table, fantastic, right? Then you've, then you've got this working relationship. If they don't want the help or if they don't want it right now, that doesn't matter either. You can still be friends. It's not like, it's not like these multi-level marketing people that are just trying to push you know, products on people that nobody wants. And then as soon as somebody says, hey, you know what? I'm not really interested in buying those essential oils or I don't need that bag or you know, I'm not buying the Amway products. Then of course, you never hear from the person again because the only reason they're talking to you in the first place is they just want you to buy their stuff. And so that's why it's uncomfortable. And like, I regularly have conversations with people when I, when, and they say, you know, I can't find the leads. You know, th 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 they have this scarcity mindset with regard to where they're going to find their next client, how they're going to get more leads. And so we begin to walk through a little, you know, I have this like four step process that I can walk you through. It's pretty easy. And usually during the course of that process, you'll come up with, at least 10, maybe as many as like 50 different leads that you could go out and, and approach and offer to do some, some you know, your, your, you know, the things that you know how to do, offer to help them in some way. And when you, and, and so then the problem does not become finding the leads. The leads are everywhere. Like I just said, there are business owners all over the place who, if they actually had confidence that what they were doing online was going to make a difference for their business, they would invest and they would invest big in it. The reason they're not investing is because everyone is offering the, the services that, that don't really seem to matter. And the people and the web developers that are making these offers have this very internal focus. It's inwardly focused. Like, what can I get for me? Like, how can I grow my business? How many websites do I need to sell? At what price in order to, you know, to stay in business? And then what happens is, the clients, they sense that you're kind of just in it for you and you're not really in it to actually help them. And so <clears throat> sometimes that's kind of an under the current sort of a thing. It's not like an overt thing, but the bottom line is if you're not offering anything that's really going to move the bottom line for your client, then <clears throat> it's not a very high value offer and it's a problem. So you know, kind of getting back to the scarcity concept, so do you, do you have these leads that never call you back? Uh, do you send out proposals and, and, and prospects just kind of sit on the proposal and nobody ever re replies to you? And you know, how do you justify the rates over someone who charges less? So if these are some of the issues that you're kind of going through. <clears throat> it may be the case that you have this upside down view of scarcity, thinking that the clients are the thing that are, that, that's where the, that the scarce resource is the clients as opposed to the scarce resource being an actual person who understands how digital marketing and, and web development works and actually bringing a result out of those services to actually benefit the actual end client. So when you feel like it's the client that's the scarce resource, you go, you go around accepting any project that you can get, you lower your price because you're scared that if you raise your price to what you're really worth, then you know, clients are just gonna go to the next cheapest option. And that's, that's basically the point. Like we just said, it's like, how do you justify your rates over someone who's going to charge less than what you're charging? And remember before, a couple of, a couple of sessions ago, I was like, hey, if you're charging you know, $2,000 or less for your website, you're overcharging your client because you know, if you're gonna charge $2,000 to build out a website that doesn't really do anything, why can't they get it for $1,000? And if you're charging $1,000, why can't they get the same result for $800? And if you're charging $800, why can't they get the same result for 500? And it just kind of goes on down till we got to the point where we, where we mentioned the, the $50 website that was posted here in, in our Facebook group, which apparently was actually legit. I thought at first somebody was just kind of, you know, pranking me or whatever, because we constantly talk about how you know, the, 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 the building a website, such a commodity, it's now worth like 50 bucks. And then of course there's, there's the actual ad in our group about the $50 WordPress site, but for whatever. So I actually commented on it. It turns out the guy that left the message really was a little ticked off at me thinking, you know, cause I thought he was, I thought he was teasing me. And it turned out that he was actually for real. He actually wanted people to, to hire him for 50 bucks to build, to build a responsive WordPress site. And so, and, but that's the point. Nobody's going to get a result of any sort out of a $50 WordPress site because no one's going to, first of all, the site's probably going to be a mess. But on top of that, no one's going to be there to help the client get any sort of 
any sort of result. How are they going to grow an email list? How are they going to get more customers? You know, what is it going to do for their, for their lead generation? You know, nothing. It's, it's not going to do anything because no one's doing anything. The client doesn't know how to do anything. And the developer is, is, is moving on to go help somebody else. And so that's why it's a low value thing. And there's tons of people out there doing it. And your clients know that there's tons of people out there doing it. And that's why they're not responding to your leads or, or, or you know, prospects are just kind of sitting on proposals. You know, nothing's really happening. And so the big question becomes, how do your clients see you? Do your clients see you as one of these people that's just running around trying to sell as many websites as they can, hopping from client to client as fast as possible to be able to ramp up your revenue? <clears throat> and this kind of ties into what we were talking about a couple sessions ago about your experience. Has, is, is the experience that you've developed over the years... In, is, is that building your business or is it just causing you to get, you know, burnt out and overworked because you're, you know, the, basically the way you're increasing your revenue is you're taking on more work because you can do the work faster. So whereas, let's say a year ago, maybe it took you, you know, 10 hours to do a particular task, whereas now you can do that same task in five hours. So now you can do twice as many tasks but at basically the same rate because you're afraid that if you raise your rates, then somebody's just going to go to a cheaper provider. And so basically the way that you grow your business is just to stress yourself out more by taking on more and more work. And your experience is not actually causing any sort of growth in your business other than the fact that you can simply take on more work and burn yourself out faster. What your experience should be doing is it should be differentiating you from all the other people out there that don't have your experience and your expertise and that show up asking clients, basically tell me what to do, and, they, and, and, and just kind of waiting for your client to just you know, tell you what to do, as opposed to showing up with leadership. I can't stress enough how important it is that if you want to make a difference for your business and for your client's business, you have to show up with leadership. So like if you've, if you've watched one of my training sessions about the five shifts to basically selling $5,000 websites, the very first one is showing up with leadership and integrity. And what I mean by that is take your experience and your skills and all of the experience that you have and present something that will enable your client to do better than they would otherwise be able to do if they were, if they were telling you what to do, right? So, or, or if they were telling another, another lower budget option, you know, whether it's a you know, cheaper WordPress developer or just building their own site on Wix. Whatever. So if somebody's doing something like, you know, if the client is responsible for telling you what to do, you're not showing up with leadership. That's not integrity because you know that you're going to be charging more than they're going to be getting back from the site and someone could be doing it for cheaper all the way down to like 50 bucks. And so why would you ask somebody to spend $2,000 for the same outcome that they could get for 50 bucks? That's not showing up with leadership. That's not showing up with integrity. On the other hand, if your clients see you as their path to success, that's leadership, that's integrity, that's how, that's how you can help your clients move along into, um, into a bigger business, into a, into a stronger business because of the work that you're doing for them through your digital marketing web development experience. So, so that's the big question. So how do your clients see you? Do they see you just like everybody else and you're just another drop in the bucket? And in which case there is no scarcity because any old web developer can do the, do, do the same types of things. And are you, always, are you always there? Are you always available just kind of begging for work? Are you just kind of showing up, you know, just hoping somebody will hire you because you really just need the work? Are you waiting for your client to come up with, your, with the plan to implement? Or are you introducing the plan to implement? Are you coming up with a strategy? And, um, and are you offering something that they can get anywhere? And in other words, like if somebody calls, you, calls up your client and says, hey, would you like a responsive website? You can get that anywhere. They can build it for free. They can build it for free on Wix or Squarespace or Weebly or whatever. Or they can you know, contact the, the guy that posted the, the $50 responsive WordPress site for $50, $50. You know, that's what I'm talking about. And if they, if so, if your clients see you in the same way that they see all those other people, then there is no scarcity. There, you're just another drop in the bucket. You're just another one of the people out there trying to make a living selling WordPress sites and not really being very successful at it. And, the, and the, the proof is in the statistics. We've talked about it multiple times where the average hourly rate 
is like less than 30 bucks an hour. I think we, I can't remember the exact statistic, but it was somewhere way over 50%, like 85, 90% of most WordPress developers are earning an average hourly rate of less than 30 bucks an hour. And the an annual salary is somewhere around like 35, $40,000 a year. And, you know, and it's just, it's very difficult to grow past that when you're showing up in a way where the clients are seeing you as the same as everybody else. And so, and so then the next question becomes, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as the same as everybody else? Or are you able to differentiate what you're doing from what everyone else is doing, relying on your skills and your experience and, and the, the, the projects you've done in the past and the insight that you have that your clients don't have and that other developers don't have? Are you bringing that to the table or are you just kind of suppressing it and you know, just, just offering to you know, do whatever people say? So another way to kind of ask yourself that question is like, if you're in a client meeting and you're presenting what you were doing, why should someone pick you? Like, why should a client work with you instead of somebody else? And, uh, and of course, the answer to that becomes, you know, it's got to be more than just we're in the same time zone. We can talk on the phone or show up face to face. It's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than just I want to do a good job because even the people that are offering this kind of service driven approach, they want to do a good job, too. Like most I'm not suggesting and I don't, I don't want to you know be confusing about this. I'm not suggesting that all the other WordPress developers or whatever are bad people. That's not at all the point. The point that I'm saying is they're simply not showing up with leadership and that is the problem, but they still want to do a good job. They want the client to say, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. And then they want to show up and do X, Y, and Z really well to the best of their ability and, and to the best of their ability, which is also restrained by the structure of their business sometimes. So, you know, one of the things we also talk a lot about is, are you giving yourself the opportunity to actually be successful? And, and what that means is, do you, are you selling a project that will that that has a high enough price point on it so that you can really do your best work or do you have to rush through it to try to find the next client so that you can then kind of rush through that so that you can find the next client so you can just make enough revenue overall just to stay in business and that's your structure you're not giving yourself the opportunity to actually succeed you're not giving yourself the opportunity to do your best work and if you're not doing your best work then your clients aren't getting your best work. And if their clients aren't getting your best work, they're not getting the best kind of results that they could be. And so, so that's, that's a big issue. So the point is, you know, make sure that you're structuring your business in a way that gives you the opportunity to, do, to, to succeed, both for yourself and for your clients. And, and so, so when you're looking back at yourself, you know, what differentiates you? Like, how are you going to be different from everybody else? And it's got to be more than simply wanting to do a good job. It's got to be more than simply saying, I'll answer phone calls and respond to emails and we can even do face-to-face -face meetings, whatever. It's got to be more than that because that's what everybody's doing. And so that means relying on your experience and your leadership, your integrity, your authority, your expertise. Those are the types of things that you really want to be focusing on as what differentiates you from everybody else. And that's what sets you apart. So then back to kind of what we were talking about to sort of wrap this up is, is it, is it really hard to find clients? Is that really what the issue is? Is the scarcity on the side of the clients or is the scarcity with you? How many people are there like you who really have your client's best interest in mind, who are really out there to serve the clients and, and to deliver the kind of results that they really, really need? And, and to, to, to really draw this out, I can guarantee you that there are vastly more clients out there who really need genuine help from someone who cares and someone who cares enough to actually do something about the fact that they care. And what I mean by that is someone who cares enough to actually put a plan in place to show up with authority, with expertise, with leadership, with integrity, and to guide your clients, to, to raise your clients up to a level that they can't get to on their own. And that, that means introducing them to things that they've never heard of before, you know, you know, giving them plans that they would not be able to create by themselves. So for example, if somebody called me up and said, I need you to, des to design an airplane, I know very, very little about airplanes and would be a, a bad person to make that sort of a plan. But if I thought, oh, good grief, I really have to have an airplane and I don't know anyone else is going to do it. So, you know, here are the features I want in the plane. I would come up with a relatively bad schematic or whatever, a relatively bad plan 
for an airplane. Whereas if someone who has been a pilot for the last five years said, hey, you know, here's, here's some of the stuff that you really need in your plane and let me put that in there for you, I would be so appreciative of that. I would be so grateful for that. And if everybody else was just coming along saying, hey, you want a plane? I'll build one. Tell me what to do. And then somebody showed up and said, hey, here's what you really need. Let me, if, you, if you really need a plane that's going to be able to fly you, you know, up and down the East Coast, for example, and you don't have to go you know, international flights or whatever, and you're taking into account. So what I'm saying is I'm taking into account what I'm trying to do and then giving me a solution that's really going to be my best option for that. That's a big deal. And of course, the same concept applies to anything that you're trying. It's not just about web marketing. Like if you're trying to buy like a jet ski or something like that. I know Jim, he's, he's checking out. He's got a jet ski. I bet when he was, if he didn't know anything about, or if I didn't know anything about jet skis and Jim was selling jet skis, I would be like, you know, this is, here's what I want to do. You know, I, I just, I, all I want to do is to kind of cruise around. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to tow any skiers. I don't need to go 8,000 miles an hour. I just want to, you know, some, some nice kind of reliable jet ski that I can just kind of cruise up and down the coast with, you know, maybe put my wife on the back with me so you can see two people. And that's, that's what, I, that's how I want to use it. What do you recommend? And then of course he would say, well, here's what I think you ought to do. Here's, here's a really reliable fuel efficient, you know, stable jet ski that's going to be perfect for you, which is which would be a different situation than if he if I said, hey, here's what I want to do. I want to just blast this. I want to be a, I want to race. I want to be you know, I want I want that kind of jet ski where they don't even have any seats. You just stand in the tray and you like race as fast as you can. That would be a really different kind of situation than, you know, just kind of cruising along. Just me and my wife going up and down, looking at some cool stuff. And so um <laughs> Jim says he should sell sell me his jet ski before it kills him. So, uh, but but here's the point. The point that I'm trying to make with all of this is if you can show up with expertise and lead your client into the results that actually that they're actually looking for, rather than just saying, "Hey, let me sell you something. Let me sell you something. Let me sell you something." That is a, that's the high value thing. And I wouldn't be able to get as good of a jet ski on my own or build as good of an airplane on my own as someone who knows what's going on in that field would be able to do in terms of advising me and leading me to the actual solution that I'm looking for. And that's what I'm talking about when it comes to leadership and WordPress and web design and, and, and shifting away from just being a WordPress company or a web design company and to a business consultant. And you power the results that you deliver with the WordPress ecosystem, which is stronger now than it has ever been before, which gives you more power to deliver better results than ever before. And so that's the point that I'm really trying to underscore here is, uh, you know, if you really find that it's hard to connect with clients, the truth of the matter is there are so many more clients out there than, than, than there are, you know, web developers but the clients aren't hiring the web developers because they don't have confidence in what the developers are offering because of the way that they position their businesses, the way that the, the developers are thinking of themselves, the way they're showing up with a lack of leadership. And, and again, when I say people are showing up with a lack of, uh, well, a lack of leadership and, and not really putting integrity into the mix, I don't mean that they're an evil people. I'm, I really want to be strong on the point that I'm, I'm not suggesting that if you were doing this or if other people are doing this, that that makes you a bad person. What it does, though, is it makes your business very difficult to grow and it doesn't serve your clients as deeply and as effectively as it could if, in fact, you made this shift that we're talking about. It's, it's a transformational inside out, upside down. I mean, it's a huge shift. And that's the reason I really wanted to put this group together and start this podcast and do these training sessions is so that we could really, really talk about doing this is something that I've been doing for 16 years. And I've seen the evolution of web design over that period of time. And a lot of people are still stuck in the mindset that it's a big deal to have a website. And if, you could, and if you're going to start a business, you have to have a website. And therefore, simply building a website is a valuable thing. That's only partially true now. It is very important to have a website, but building a website is no longer a valuable thing. What's valuable is taking the online presence at large, like the overarching online presence, and doing something that has an impact for the business. And of course the impact looks different depending on who the client is. Like say if you're working with a local restaurant compared to a chiropractor, compared to someone who runs a landscaping business, compared to a doctor, you know, all of those different people have different types of impacts that they want to make, so to speak. 
But the point is simply having a website alone isn't going to do it. And if you're out there selling services where your client isn't able to connect the dots between what you're doing and how that's going to be meaningful for, to them, then it's a low value thing and you're just kind of fading into the background or just another drop in the bucket, so to speak. But if you can set yourself apart by converting, by making that transition from being that WordPress business to being a business consultant, powering your results with WordPress, then I think you're gonna see a gigantic difference in the way that you think of yourself, the way that your clients view you, the rates that you can charge, the clients that you can attract, the prices, all of the, everything is gonna be a completely different thing. And scarcity is gonna be on your side because so few people are taking the time to really think through how they can help someone and, they're, and, they, and the vast majority of their attention is simply on their technical skills. Very little attention on business development. Whether the business development is for them or for their clients, there's very little attention on that. Most of the attention tends to be on the technical skill side. And then once people get good at the technical skills, then they just go out into the market and say, I can do a lot of technical things, hire me. And of course, everyone is saying, I don't understand even how to hire you, even if I wanted to, because I can't figure out how doing those technical things is gonna make a difference on my business. And therefore, I don't know what the value is. I don't have confidence to make that investment. I'm just gonna pass for now. And that's why people don't respond to your proposals. That's why people aren't calling you back. Or, or, or answering your emails, it's because they don't have the confidence, they don't know what's going on. So on the, so, but if you show up in the other way, like if you show up in a way where you're serving your clients, you're showing up with that leadership we've been talking about, and you're giving them access to results that they wouldn't be able to achieve just if they had to think it through on their own, you know, kind of like we were just talking about the, the airplane and the, and the jet ski analogy, you know, leading your clients into the right solution for them because of the results it's going to deliver. And then you have both sides. You have the technical chops to pull it off and you have the vision to make the offer in the first place. That's what I'm talking about with regard to being a business consultant, empowering your results with the WordPress ecosystem. And, um, and so, you know, the final thing I want to leave you guys with is this. Stop acting like everybody else. If you want results that are different from what everybody else is getting, and again, those results are you know, easy to see. Go back and check out some of the sessions we've talked about with what people are charging in the WordPress world right now. And you'll find that it's cheap stuff. It's generally cheap. Like about, the average WordPress site's about a thousand bucks. The average hourly rate's under 30 bucks an hour. The average annual income is somewhere around 35 grand a year. If you wanna do better than that, you're gonna to have to do something different from what everybody else is doing. And that's why I'm talking to you about this transformation into being that business consultant where you have two things now. You don't just have the technical skills, but you also have the business development, the vision, the mindset, the leadership that comes along with that, the expertise, the authority. And you, and you have to put both of those two things together in order to have a business structure that will give you the opportunity to actually succeed at what you're doing. And when I say success, it's for, to me, success is only success if it has two parts. It has to be beneficial for you so that you can stay in business and grow and, and everything that you need for your business, but it also has to be beneficial for your clients too. You can't just be selling them cheap stuff that doesn't make a difference for them and consider that success. Success has to be results for you and results for them. And, if you, and in order to pull that off, you have to have two areas of focus. You have to have the tech stack so that you actually have something that you can build and implement and do for somebody. And you have to have the business vision, the business development stack, which is the part that, that allows you to connect with, with your clients in a way that's different and better and superior and ha much higher value than what everyone else is doing. And if you, if you can set yourself apart like that, then you can, you can easily make five to ten thousand dollars per month on your own with a workload that you can handle on your own without having to hire additional subcontractors or whatever to 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 fulfill at that level and then if you want to scale beyond that you can do that but you have you have this recurring revenue coming in so you're not just kind of rolling the dice and hoping for the best when you hire somebody you're saying hey you know what here's what my current business looks like here's what my monthly revenue is looking like here are the ongoing retainers that i have with my different clients and that means i'm making you know x dollars per month you know somewhere five to ten thousand per month and if you're thinking now okay well i want to scale that up even more then you can begin to 
you know, onboard new help, like in, in whatever areas that you want to continue to scale it up. And you can do it with the confidence that you have that recurring income coming in. That's really what a sound business is all about. So if that's what you want to do, that's what the double stack program is all about. Those two areas of focus, I call it double stack because it's the tech stack, it's the business development stack. It gives you both of those areas that enable you to structure your business so you can succeed for yourself and for your clients. So having said all of that, if you want to talk about this, if this is the kind of the kind of direction you really want to go in for 2019 and you're sick of all of this cheaper stuff, then I really want to encourage you to give me a call and head over to doublestack.net slash call and we'll get together for free and talk about this stuff one on one. And we'll talk about your clients and whether or not they see you as something different from what everyone else is offering. And if not, how can we restructure and reposition your business to do that? And, um, and then if at the end of that call, you want my help implementing the things that we talked about, then we can talk about the double stack program and if it's a good fit for you and for me. It's, it's got to go both ways. But at the same time, if it's not a good fit or you don't want the extra help, at least now you have the direction and, and, and we've had the chance to really put a step-by-step -step plan in place so that you can begin to make this, this, this transition, this shift, this transformation of your business so you're not doing the same things that everybody else is doing and therefore you won't be getting the same flat results. And instead, you're actually going to be making a huge difference. So if that sounds good to you, head on over to doublestack.net slash call and um, go ahead and book a call. You'll see my calendar. I've got some time and, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look up. And since it's, it, we're almost at Christmas, so this is the last training session of the year, I believe. And uh, we'll, we'll pick it back up again on, uh, I think it's going to be January 8th, which is the, the first Tuesday after the new year. So we'll, we'll be back together then. And... Um, and there we go. So let's see. It says uh, Jim says Lee helped me get my very first customer. They're worth eight thousand dollars and offered me a percentage of net profits in addition to my monthly retainer. I mean that's fantastic, Jim. Yeah, Jim and I were working together on a, on a proposal, and that's freaking fantastic. An eight thousand dollar client, net profits in the mix, a monthly retainer, and it's his first client. So I mean that's th that's exactly the kind of results I'm talking about. If that's the kind of stuff that you want to be doing too, then uh, then let's talk about it. And head over to doublestack.net slash call and we will get on the phone and see if we can put a plan in place and if, and if so, uh, what that looks like. And then if you, and again, this is not, this is not like a sales call for the double stack program. The whole point of it is to make sure that this is the direction that you want to go in and then give you a step-by-step -step plan to get there. And then if you want my help implementing the stuff we talk about, awesome. If you don't want my help implementing it and you just want to take what we talk about and go forward on your own, that's totally cool too. But the point is, and the reason that I do all of this is to help people get out of the whole, the whole, I don't, to, to differentiate yourself and to, and to not be one of the people that's simply rushing from client to client, selling low budget stuff, stressing everybody out and not getting any results. So if that sounds great to you, head over to doublestack.net slash call and uh, we'll be back together again uh, in 2019. I've got a lot of really exciting stuff that I want to be talking to you guys about. So, uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. And um, and I've got on my, my Christmas sweater today. So if you're, if you're listening to this on the podcast and you want to see my Christmas sweater, as exciting as it might be, uh, you can head over to our Facebook group at Building High Value WordPress Sites. So hop on in, into Facebook and uh, do a little quick search for the group called Building High Value WordPress Sites. If you're watching this on Facebook and you want to kind of, and you want to get these lessons kind of on the go so you can listen to them in the car or while you're working out or whatever, head over to iTunes and you'll see the double stack podcast you can just search for double stack in there and you can subscribe to the podcast and if you do i would really appreciate it if you would leave an awesome review so that would that kind of helps you know get the uh get a little bit more uh i don't know what you call it rank you get yourself ranked up on the uh, on the itunes algorithm so so we got the podcast that you can subscribe to and review we've got these these live sessions in the facebook group so if this is something that you want to interact with live like like jim is doing here kind of chatting then um Definitely do that. And then we'll be back again starting uh, January with some more training sessions. Until then, I, you know, we can still talk on the phone between now and then um, at doublestack.net slash call. All right, guys. And uh, there we have it. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll be talking again soon. Take care.